Shana, Sister Audrey, Sister Janisha, Sister Lania, Sister Casa, Sister Princess. Come on in, everybody. Come on in, come on in. Come on in, Sister Renata. Sister Alice. Hey, help. Do I need to call 911? Hello. Do I need to call 911? Hello. Let me see. Sister Sister Lay. All right, y'all. So y'all ready to ask the first lady, huh? Hmm. You sure about that? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, I'm glad y'all joined us. This is going to be a fantastic conversation. We'll be talking to the first lady of restoration, the fragrance of the house. We call her Lorenza Saucy. How does it feel like a restoration church of Jesus Christ in Dayton, Ohio? Not, not restoration in Zimbabwe. Yes, there we go. We are all, we coming from you all the way from Dayton, Ohio. I'm coming via Cleveland, Dayton, Ohio, because you know I get suspected it completely. You're yes. now. You're in Dayton. I am. I'm, I, I am. Your children are really born here. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes. Let me see. We got brother Darcel, Barry, my mama. Hi. 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 Mama Price. Thank you for joining us. Hi, this is the Crystal with us. All right, Sister Crystal. All right. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Get your questions in or whatnot. Get them in. If you got them in. If you sent them, we have them. If you sent them, we have them. And we're ready. And we're ready. All right. Sister Destin, me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mama, you want to learn all about your daughter? <laughs> Tune in. She might share something you didn't know. Who knows? Sister Diamond. Diamond. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. It's already 7.05. Let's get right on and get this cracking. Absolutely. So I'll start with praise the Lord, everyone. Praise him, praise him, and praise him. Um, this is Ask the First Lady. There were a two-part series of As the Pastor, so I am coming with my own very own rendition of it, and there's questions that you guys have asked. I have my very own Elder Pharaoh extraordinaire that will be assisting me on this evening. I'm going to do my very best to answer everyone's questions, because I know that's why you're watching. Absolutely. So I'm going to try to keep it to a two to three minute limit if possible, if possible. OK, and if we go in and we just go in. But that is uh, that is at least my my um, attempt and intent is to answer all of your questions on this evening. Absolutely. All so right. thank you all for joining us. What we're going to do before we get started, first lady, we're going to have you to render a really quick prayer for us, all right. and then we'll dive into these questions. These Absolutely. are really phenomenal questions, so I'm really excited to get started. Absolutely. I ask that you all join um, me wherever you are in prayer. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity. Father, we thank you for waking us up on this day. Father, we thank you for keeping us safe and protecting us and shielding us. Father, we thank you for 
for being our source and our sustainer. We ask as we go forward tonight with this Bible study, Father, that you use me as a tool and as a vessel to help your people. Whatever question they may ask, don't allow it to come from me, but Lord, allow it to come straight through you. Um, Shut my mouth up and open up yours, Lord, and then mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Right. So, um, as I, I, first of all, I love to interview and I uh, love to interview people that I know because often I find out things that I don't know about them. Um, uh, first lady is um, a, a phenomenal person who I think um, is um, in a lot of ways breaking stereotypes of what we think can you no? Just give me the tea. And Thank you. <laughs> we have our assistant. <laughs> <laughs> assistant is supposed to be in the back. Back. They trying to get into the. Sh- um. <laughs> so what I'm saying was, <laughs> this is the problem. Let's go back in the prayer. No problem. The spirit of distractions. I forgot to add that in there. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So I love to interview people I know because often during the interview I get to learn something about them that I don't know. What I love about First Lady Saucer is really, um, <clears throat> she really defies some of the stereotypes when you think of a First Lady. Um, and again, I'm labeling them stereotypes because that's what they are. No person, no person that sits in a role um, is uh confined to what we think of as that person in that role. Um, she's very reachable, very touchable, um, very wise um, and um, observant and discerning. And um, you know what I like? They, we call her at the church, they call her shepherd mother. And I like that because that was given to me by Bishop Fields. We'll, and we'll take and it. I, yes. yes. And we'll take I, it because I, I Bishop Fields. absolutely. Bishop Fields, if you're home here, praise Jesus. Praise um, <laughs> because first lady he is no nonsense. She's a perfect balance to pastor. Pastor is a, a kind heart, can never say no. We love him, but there's balance. Praise Jesus for balance. And so um, I'm honored today because also First Lady is a long, long, lifelong, I would consider a lifelong friend of mine. And so I'm honored. I'm truly, truly honored. Um, so we're going to start lighthearted and then we're going to dive into some deeper things here. So right. when I interviewed Pastor, one of the first questions I asked, and I'm going to ask you, if you had to choose one restaurant to go in the whole city, where would you go? Because we know it ain't JJ's, whereas Pastor <laughs> loves JJ's. And I told y'all when I interviewed Pastor that JJ's is a local chicken and fish joint that, I mean, they douse it in like lemon pepper. It's a mess. But he loves it. It's like lemon pepper powder or something. I don't know. Something. So where would you go first, lady? Where would you go? Anthrax. Where would I go? In the city. In the city. In It's in the city. Mm-hmm. We'll give you the Miami Valley because Dayton is very low. Valley, because everything, let me see, let me stay in the city. Not Cincinnati, like London. Hi, Erica, Sister Erica. See. In the city. Pastor hates the background, my lord. I am. <laughs> Someone wrote in the comments. Wow, in the city, I will go to... I don't really have, like, a favorite restaurant. Like, if we're not, like, I have to have. Um, a certain, I'm trying to think. If we the world's to open today, where are we going to eat? Where are we going? Today, if they say we can go outside, where are you going? We can go outside. <laughs> uh, can I make a suggestion? What's this? You, because really, this is how it goes. <laughs> this is how it goes. Let me, let me, let me let the world know. This is how it I'm goes. a foodie. I'm hungry. So I text her like, listen, I'm hungry. She says, what do you got a taste for? I don't know. I'm thinking something crunchy, something spicy, something. You know, I may throw out some recommendations out there. And then she tells me, go here, order this. And it's the best we thing go ever. there. I order this. We get done. And I'm texting her like, you never lost. Did it again. So you probably will answer the question better than I would. I think I would suggest Sweeney's. I was going to say Seafood. Sweeney's. I was going to say Sweeney's. <laughs> or I was. I was thinking Sweeney's. Um. Yeah, I probably would say. Sweet. Or what? Or, or um. Darn it! It just slipped my mind. It just slipped my mind. I probably hit a bonefish. Bonefish. I probably hit bonefish a bonefish. Bonefish is a good spot. We do I like bonefish. Would. Your sister Erica suggested Papados. 
That's well, that's not even the day. Yeah, that's not Erica. Now, I would if it was if if it was different dealing with outside outskirts, so you know, yeah, Cincinnati area, area, it would probably maybe not Poppy those, but uh, my chart was it Char House? What is that? Is that it, Erica? Is it Char House? Char House? Is that the one that sit on the lake? Oh, um, I mean, sit on the um, river, the high river. Oh. oh man, that's my spot right there. That that is a go. Okay, we can talk about food all day, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to move. So maybe Sweeney's or Bonefish. What is something about you you wish people knew? Um, a lot of people don't know that I am an introvert. People think I you really think you don't think that you think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just... Okay. Sorry to all right. Here. Okay. Okay. Maybe y'all do know. Maybe we know. I think know. we kind of know that. Maybe y'all do know that about me. You oh, gotta no, dig deeper on this one. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. No, if it was if it was anything, okay. So what I would love, I've always wanted to do was be able to play instrument. Okay. Or instruments. I didn't know that. Um, bass will be one, okay. and drums will be another. All right. Okay. I like that. Bass and drums. She look easy. Bass yes. and drums. Yes. Okay. Yes. I did not know that. That's good. Introvert. <laughs> For those of you that may not know, I. <laughs> I cute. am an introvert. Okay. I am. I am. Okay, so ask your questions. <laughs> ask your question. You you you're an ambivert. You you switch yeah. when you have to. Yes, I do. I do. With that. so with your questions that you all submitted, I categorized them. So don't get offended by the titles. I made them. She didn't. Okay. <laughs> so this first section we're gonna call balance and rotate it. Okay. These are all your questions about balance and life Ooh. in different areas. So Let's talk about it. So, um, <clears throat> is it tough to juggle your career, your family, and ministry? As is it tough with anybody, and even if you're not in this position, it definitely is um, a task with juggling all different hats. It definitely is. A, it, I would be lying if I say <laughs> I do it with the breeze. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely is difficult. Um, what is what is the greatest challenge in trying to juggle them? And I'm asked. I'm further. This, you know, I'm in my Oprah mode right now. Okay. So I'm asking follow-up questions that may not be here. Okay. But what do you feel pulls on you the most? Okay. Well, I would have to say um, we have four children. So I think what. So the first part of the question was career, family, ministry. Um, is it which, tough juggling? Yes, it's, it is tough juggling. But the first part of the second question, you asked something. Oh, you asked something. I added there. Um, so what makes it tough? What makes it tough? What makes it tough is um, <clears throat> with our four children, I want to be able to give them equal amount of time. And I feel like I don't always, I'm not always able to give them equal amount of time. And that frustrates me because of everything else that's going on. Or I have to share them mm. at the same time of ministry or at, a, at the same time of um you know, um, whatever it may be, whatever, if it's, if it's, um, dealing with ministry, then they, they have, that's where we all have to go. And that's where they get to spend time with their mother type of thing. And I, now with the, with the quarantine, it's a little bit more easier and things are kind of mellowing, mellowing out. But during whenever if everything was lifted up and whatnot, it was difficult, you know, making sure I spent at least equal amount of time with each of them understandable so um the next question is how can the church support you more and i want to go further than that to say and, and you can only um speak in general terms as it pertains to people outside of our ministry and in specific terms as it pertains to you as a first lady Absolutely. how can ministry support first ladies more and then how can the ministry specifically support lady saucer more me, I'm, I'm gonna go with me first. Mm -hmm. Supporting me is not what you really would think as supporting me. Supporting me would be um, we go under the the acronym of ARC: being accountable, being responsible, and being committed. Mm -hmm. If you are those things, if you are accountable to ministry, if you are responsible to ministry, if you are committed to ministry, mm -hmm. and your whether ministry not not whether but both ministry. Um, as it relates to the local assembly and your own personal ministry and your growth and your relationship with Christ, then you are a help to me. Then you are a support to me. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. When you are not in those, uh, when you are not operating from under the arc, then it can become a little bit more burdened. And you're pulling and tugging on me at areas mm -hmm. that um, if you were under the arc, you would understand how to go about carrying yourself or go about um, how to go out and come in, mm -hmm. so to speak. So when you're not operating under that, then it is more of a tug and a pull. Right. Um, so that to me would be more of a support to me. That's that's where uh, that's where I feel like I'll be more supported in my position. If you are doing, if you are obedient, it's just like any parent. If you have your children are obedient and doing what they are supposed to be doing, you are proud. You're a proud parent, mm -hmm. and so that's where how it relates to me. As a first ladies and as a whole, and I can definitely include myself in this. As a first ladies and whole, I think a lot of put a lot in general speaking. Um, of course, there's some outliers in there. Um, they are overlooked a lot of times. They're overlooked. They are not considered as much as maybe the pastor. And a lot of times where the pastor ideas may be coming from, yeah. a lot of the yeah. uh, true thoughts and topics, a lot of what you hear in the pulpit could be coming you from... You have a question that's coming later. Could be coming from his the, the his Ooh, rib, really. That's wonderful. So um, being more uh, vocal in your support. Be very general in your support. Sorry, our assistant. You had two episodes. It's not your turn. <laughs> oh gosh. Be, two episodes. Be, being um being genuine, being genuine um when how you deal with her, mm. being organic and how you deal with her. You don't have to be overly um you know hey per se like a like a like a, uh, a big fan or anything like that, but just being general, being honest. Um, support her the way same way you will support. However, you give your support to the pastor, your support for her should be identical. That is so. Funny. Whatever it is that she, she's, if she's throwing events or ha hosting events or whatever right. it may be, if you would, if the pastor was hosting events and he was doing things of that nature, and you would be in attendance, then be in attendance. Um, if if whatever it may, whatever it may be, if you call out the pastor name and prayer, please call out her name. You know. Um, so as a whole, that I mean, I think that's how, uh, in general, how people can be much more in support um, when it comes to, to first ladies all around the world. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, and so the next question is, how do you implement boundaries when you have so many people pulling at you and looking to you? Mm -hmm. um, this is this is a really good question. And let me frame this by saying, so um, you generally spoke to how people can serve under the arc and be valuable that way mm -hmm. and be prepared to serve in other capacities. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think one of the things that people have um, a hard time with is the fact that people have a right to say who they'd like to be in their personal space mm -hmm. or work Absolutely. closer with them. Absolutely. Um, and people feel like you're being funny acting or you're not being you know, fair in how you allow people in your space. But when you operate in function of ministry, <clears throat> and I'm just saying this from, a, from having that experience, not in your position specifically, but um, how do you specifically establish boundaries when you do have so many things pulling? Um, as it pertains to balancing this whole family ministry mm -hmm. career. Absolutely. How I do it is how I would tell any woman that sit under me or anyone that gets constant from me um, is there, there has to be limitations. There has to be limitations. You can't let everyone into your personal space, everyone into your personal life, because it drains you. It would they would completely drain you. So there gotta be just like think of a store. There's boundaries and everything and every we make, we don't think of it like this, but think of it like a store. There's functioning open hours that you can go in, shop, and come out. That's how you should be. You should have functioning open hours. These are the hours where I'm willing to take your phone calls. These are the hours where I'm willing to do counseling. And um, when you're not doing those, you know, when you're not doing the counseling, when you're not taking phone calls, then that's when you can really pull back and maybe do some personal self-care or give yourself to your family and so forth. So 
Um, my, one of the things for certain is I limit who have access to me. I have an assistant who, um, who is gracious enough to lend out her phone number. But even in with that, there ought to be a cutoff in accessing her as well. Um, so I don't have a full on access where you could just call, you could just call me. You could just, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. Um, like that. And then if you do, I, I still will, you know, expect want you to it. understand and expect that I'm just not going to drop what it is that I do. Cause outside of this and this quarantine right now, I'm, I'm, I am, you know, at home, but I work a full-time job as well. Full-time so, teacher right now. We, what's your we full-time are responsibility? We are. <laughs> what are you doing full-time today? So I don't know if you guys saw the Ask the Pastor. You did not hear me. Not, Lady Sasha didn't vote. You she didn't. Did not not one time. Right. Not once. Those are boundaries that I even have to set up with my <laughs> oh, spouse. My Lord. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. But so, yes. So there are, there are limitations. And I, I wouldn't want anybody to take it personal because that was what I would tell you. No one should have access. To, no one should have access to you. No one should just be able to come to your home. And it's, it's a running joke in the church that if you come to my home without announced. No. You know, it, it, we're not opening the door. Because if no. you are not careful, um, you will be you will be just extremely drained. You'll be drained because yeah. people they don't they don't have the they may not have the intent to pull on you or to drain you. There, that's not their intent. No, but just the just ministry alone and doing the work of it is can be draining. Not that people are draining. It, it's, it's 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 just. It's it's the whole that but people only have their perspective. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so I need first lady now, but right. not realizing ten other people need first lady now. Right. Right. And right. so that is when it becomes a little heavy. Right. And so respectfully you have to say, This is what works for right. me. Right. Let's work around that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and then as you grow, as people grow, then I don't have to I should you shouldn't need a puggy pulling tuggy because I'm gonna push you to develop a relationship. That way you don't pull and tug on me so much. Right. I know some people, they want you to come, me, 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 and then they're their answer they, all. They're I'm very not, high maintenance. Right. I'm not that person. I'm going to push you to develop a relationship. So when you come to me, and what I mean by develop a relationship, I mean develop a relationship with Christ. Right. So some people come to me and they say, first lady, what should I do? I don't have an answer for it. How about, did you pray? And did you ask? Right. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to pray about it, and then I'll come back to you. No, I'm going to push you to develop that relationship because I am not the person that's going to be standing there with the Lamb's Book of Life there looking up name. I'm not going to be that one. And that's you know, I'm going to be in line just like you or however it, however it's going to take place. We are going to be on the same, you know, wavelength. So that's and then as you get older, then I can use you to pull the, the young ones up. It's just like how, you know, raising children, the best way of Looking at the church, looking at ministry, looking at ministry is looking at is is comparing it to your family. Parenting. You, my oldest, I don't have to when she gets work, I don't have to deal with her so much. She stays in her room, does it. Stuff gets turned in. The younger ones, I may have, they may require more of my attention. But then it's sometimes where if I'm busy, I can send them to mm -hmm. her, and that's how it should be in ministry. Right, right. I love that um, because I think I think a lot of times people um, in positions of leadership, um, both consciously and unconsciously, cause people to depend and rely on right. them versus Christ. Right. Um, so sometimes that's intentional, not intentional. So I love the model. And I love the structure of how you are uh, leading people in that direction. Um, so how do I, and someone is asking the question as to themselves, how okay. do I balance life and starting a business? And this is applicable because you just Absolutely. launched a just wonderful launched it. business. Give the name of your new business. And then so my business is Redefining You School of Etiquette. If you know me, you know I've always... You heard me at some point. I'm correcting somebody yeah. posturing, you know, how they sit at the table and things of that nature. So this basically, this uh, business chose me. So how do you balance um, life, life and, and, starting, and business. starting a new business? So with anything, this is what you have to do. And I, I kind of learned this from my sister because I remember we were going somewhere and she had a clipboard and she had wrote up all her tasks. That she was gonna do it. You know how you have those little side thing on your door where you could sit your and so as we were 
uh, going from one place to another place to another place. She just kind of grabbed her clipboard and was checking things off. And then whatever wasn't done that day, I guess she put it on to the next day. I didn't, you know, I didn't dive a little bit deeper to ask for what, how her method, but I was noticing it kind of, you know, gleaned a bit by osmosis. So understand that we have 24 hours in a day. So fit in what you can each day, make a checklist. This is what, for instance, when I started my business, I said, this is all what I need to do. So today I'm going to check off these five things because these five things are priority because I can't do them. Um, I can't launch it unless these are done. Mm -hmm. So unless these tasks are done. So now I start with five and then the next day, another five and the next day, another five. And before you know it, when, you know, the week has gone by, you have completed 40, some, 40 something different things that you needed to do on top of still making sure that you're living and so forth and so on. I'm still at home with the kids doing the homeschool and making sure they're doing their, their work. So during those downtimes, my, my youngest, he's one, he takes a nap. Then you know, sometimes I would take my nap too. We wake up, both of us rejuvenated. <laughs> both, you know, while he's ripping and running and so forth, I'm, you know, giving my time to him and so forth. So what I would say is to make out a checklist and take out chunks of your day that you can't, or, or I wouldn't say chunks, but I would say take out um, segments of your day, seven minutes at a time. And then, you know, devote yourself to it and then come back when you got another seven minutes and come back. However you decide whatever increments you want to do it, it adds up. And next thing you know, you have done an hour or two hour work of work, but you didn't commit a whole two hours at one time. Yeah. You'll find yourself checking off your, your uh, to-do list and things of that nature. That's good. So pri what I got on that is prioritize mm -hmm. um, and make incremental change. Yes. That's sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, and so wonderful. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, and, and we need to say hi to, I, I didn't have, let's say hey to the people on YouTube. Um, Sister Talena says, hey, First Lady and Elder Pharaoh. Uh, Sister Cicely's out right. there. Sister Teresa Johnson says, I love you. Oh, so right. hey, love YouTuber. You. Hey, love you, YouTubers. We're not leaving y'all out. We're not leaving y'all out. The phone is just really, really small. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to move to the next segment, and I'm just going to call it Relationship. Relationship. Okay. Relationship. Uh oh, y'all. Uh oh, let me get a sip. Take a sip. Ah, I think my sister it. made me some Jesus juice in here. So <laughs> let me get a sip of Jesus juice. It better be right. It better be right. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to talk about relationships. Relationship. And let me just say this, because I don't know if everybody knows the history of your relationship, um, that uh, Lorenza, Lady Lorenza, did not marry uh, Pastor Saucer when he was a pastor. No, he was not a pastor. He was not pastoring at he all. Was not a pastor. He was not pastor. He was saved. He loved he, the Lord. He, well, <laughs> he was super saved. We're going to get him back in here and talk about this. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, she didn't marry him with this role in mind or even with the ambition of knowing her personally, Absolutely. with the ambition of being a first lady. And so I just want to frame that by saying that, and then we'll dive into some of the questions and some of the first lady questions come later. As far as okay. All right. So how do you fulfill purpose as a single? And I think this is a question that we've talked about a little bit with Pastor Saucer, how but interested to know your perspective. You purpose as a single mm -hmm. first of all the thing is it purpose is purpose whether you're single or married that's honestly. good so uh how uh, it i guess i think what i want i think what the the person is maybe getting at in this this i don't know i'm, I'm assuming from just hearing it maybe they are i guess dealing with or I'm gonna say them. Let me not put, put words in where they're not. So fulfilling purpose while you're single. I'm guess you're thinking of fulfilling purpose like as if single is some kind of struggle. And it's not. Like not. Let me tell you, it's not. Okay. Tell you. All right. Sing. So singleness is. Well, let me before I get in this question real quick. Blessing. People, it absolutely is. It is. Being single is a blessing. Being married is a blessing. Being alive is a blessing. Okay. In these in these days of times, being alive seriously. People put us a, 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 such a dark cloud when it comes to singleness. And it's not a dark cloud. It's not. It's just your status. Right. It's just your status that you check mm -hmm. for on your taxes, on your job. If, okay, do I even ask? I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Only for taxes. It's right. Taxes and whatnot. So 
it's not something that I want you as in my, in my single crowd. I don't want you to hold that banter over your head like it's some bubonic plague. It's not. But can I insert this here? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Having both being married and single as an adult, um, the church has somewhat attached a stigma it to is singleness. I would have to agree. As if marriage is the goal for everyone. I'm- and that's why, um, and, and not even the church, but uh, society overall, but more so in the church, um, mm-hmm. because the church um, has has signified the family as the foundation, one of the foundations of the church, which is beautiful, mm-hmm. but that looks different for everybody. So this stigma, uh, if you're single, you're incomplete. Can you help us? No, um, absolutely that? not. Absolutely not. You're not incomplete when you're single, because for one, Marriage does not make you complete. Mm. You got to be complete yourself oh. before you get into a relationship with another complete person. Uh-huh. And then y'all complete selves come together and do something beautiful together. That's wonderful. So, um, of course, the Lord, when he put Adam and Eve together and he wanted them to be fruitful and multiply, that is God's divine um, design and order and whatnot. Um if you get married, if you don't get married, whatever it may be, you still got to operate in purpose. That's it. Operating in purpose is doing the will of God for your life. Your life. Doing the will of God according to the scripture. That means obeying, being obedient, doing the scripture, fulfilling scripture. Then there's a specific task that he has set aside for you mm-hmm. that you have to know what it is that he's telling you. And how do you find out what it is that he's telling you is through that you're going to hear it relationship with him. Yes. Because I can't sit down with you at a brunch dinner and tell you what your purpose is. Mm-hmm. I can't tell that to you. I may be in error. I may be wrong or the Lord may reveal it to me. But it may, it's, it's different things. It, it's, it's, it comes different times. Like, tell me I was going to be a first lady when I first got saved. I would not have believed you. Some person, you tell them they're going to be a first lady when they first got saved. They would start, like, being that. Or at least. What they would consider. Or what they would. Be. Well, and then yeah. that would that'd get them off kilter. Mm-hmm. That would give them all messed up and all social sorts, whatever. So I had to go through different layers of my walk to prepare me for now. Mm -hmm. So we always want to chase purpose. What is it? Purpose, purpose, purpose has a tendency to change depending on what what, uh, phase of life you're in. Mm -hmm. So, um, doing, if you stay doing the will of the Lord and, 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 um, allowing him to make you, you will stay in purpose, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're widow, whether you're divorced. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want you to do is I want you to stop the, stop the, uh, the, you know, this overhead thing of singleness is, 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 uh, I, I got to hurry up and get out of it. Like, no, being single is just being single. It's the purpose of being single is not to hurry up and get married because then you'll mess around and get married and you'll jack that up. Walk in purpose, walk in the will of God first, no matter where stages of life you're at. Stay and stick with the Lord and what he's telling you to do. And then if you do that, no matter where you're at in life, you won't have any issues whatsoever. One and I hope I answered that person's question. I do. All right. Thank you. So um, moving on, and I'm going to assume that this particular person is actually married. Okay. So we're talking about relationship. Mm-hmm. How do I stay focused on purpose within marriage and oh no, and not <laughs> my companion's flaws when Ooh. it gets on my nerves? Ooh. Lord, I okay, staying on purpose. This is a pretty heavy question right here. You Let know me break like- this down. Just going back to the formal question, staying on purpose. Again, it doesn't change no matter what your status is, okay? Doesn't change, okay? Being in the will of God is being in the will of God. Doing what the Lord says is doing what the- That's walking in purpose. Mm-hmm. If the Lord says, I want you to, uh, I want you every Tuesday, I want you down there feeding the homeless. And on Tuesdays, you at the restaurants eating tacos, because it's Taco Tuesday, you're not fulfilling purpose because this is what he told you to do. And he wants you to do that because he wants you to be a beacon of light. He wants you to witness and do all that. Okay. So if you're not doing, if you're not doing the will of God, is you can forget being 
or walking on purpose, okay? <laughs> so when it comes to the, the latter part of the question and not focusing on my husband's um, my husband's flaws. Pastor said he never gets on your nerve. He wrote that in the comments. Um, I just want you to know that. If a man <laughs> not to, don't I'm okay. just, oh, See, no, I thought, no, no, no. You know, I don't want to speak out of minute. Okay. If so, a man lied and say he is, there's no sin. He's hey. to himself already. That's the word. Oh, so anyways, um, getting past your, getting past your spouse. Even points. though you know, so that you know God's purpose for you is to be married to this person. Mm -hmm. Or God put y'all mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And how do you not focus on the stuff that gets on your nerves? Mm -hmm. The fact that you're supposed you, to be with this person, they you're get not on gonna like this answer. Are you just not gonna like this answer? <laughs> we sitting at the table. We have your husband's flaws on the table. Okay, mm -hmm. let's turn them. Let's turn the table. Mm -hmm. How about your flaws? Right. What is he dealing with with you? What does he have to put up with you? Good question. What are some things that he wish you would change? What is some? I mean, he if he keeps coming, he keeps coming back, right? With you and your flaws and your shortcomings and your he keep he keeps. I'm assuming because you're still married, right? Right. So a lot of times we always want to look at the spot. I want him to do this and that. Y'all can't. Blah, blah, blah. But we don't realize he's putting up with a bunch of stuff that we, you know, and he may not be as vocal about it, or he may just. Yeah, I feel like generally speaking, men are less peeved about things. You know, yeah, they just kind of let stuff flow. Yes, yes, <laughs> and we know this details. We do know about yes. it. We do know those details. And sometimes when I am, when you are prayerful, I can tell you this because I, I don't, I don't put on a facade that I am hanging out with cherubs, cherubs, all day. Right. Um, I'm not. I'm not. Um, with I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. So I'm not. I'm not gonna paint that picture. So um, when I am, when I am in a place of consecration and I'm prayerful, those things I don't even don't notice those things. Just doesn't. And then through now we are about to be in our 14th year. Through time and duration, you just realize, okay, that's that's them with the the, the quirks and all that other stuff, all the pet peeves and stuff. That's them. If it comes to things that are dealing with um, um, like shortcomings, like like falling, weakness, sin things, then you that are a woman, you have an you have an attribute, honey, called your mouth and the prayer life. Mm -hmm. If you pray and you consecrate, it says a, a sanctified woman sanctifies her home. You have a way of covering your home and your spouse through prayer mm -hmm. that will, uh, that first of all, you got to realize this, you can't rush the Holy Ghost on how move my husband this way, do him this way, do him that way, fix him this way, fix him that way. Because you didn't always answer the call when the Lord called your name. Mm -hmm. You didn't always, you know, come out of sin when the Lord can't, you know, mm -hmm. called your name. You was out, you know, I'll, next time, Lord, if you save me out of this, but then you found yourself back there again. So be gracious enough with how the Lord has been grace, graceful with you. That's good. You know, I saw a meme the other day and it said, well, let me change some stuff because I might be the toxic person. Yes. And I don't think we realize how we impact mm -hmm. the relationship because it takes two. And I will add to that. Like I was actually going through my home, calling myself rebuking. The, I mean, I'm rebuking. I rebuke this guy. I rebuke this problem. And all of us spoke to me was like, it's you. It's you. Boo. It's you. Everybody else is okay in here. It's you that got to change. And I just sat down quietly because that's how the Lord deals with me. He yeah. doesn't. I don't. He doesn't talk to. That's me what I've been saying. He doesn't talk to me with this little. Uh, you know, I don't know, Lorenzo. Let me just come and tell you. He, do, he doesn't have a Joel Osteen voice when he comes to me. You know, he I don't, just how he talks to me. He cuts. He cuts. Mm. He cuts me. And he like you wrong. You dead wrong. Fix that. That's wrong. And I'm like, Lord, okay. So sometimes when I do my prayer and we pray in at church, and you see me crying. So I tell him, I'm because of stuff he telling me to fix and work on. That's what. So um um yeah yeah mm -hmm. so. Good, good, good. All right. So what do you wish you knew before marriage and ministry? Mm. What do you wish what you knew? What I wish I knew before marriage and ministry. First of all, you have to know who I'm married to. Lord Hammers. <laughs> I've known him for a long time. I'm sure. Ooh, if I knew him. <laughs> Lord, I could have 
should have I should have been on flying as well in his apartment for a couple years before I met. No, what I would have hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. This song just came to my head. What is it? What is his name? Ty Jeremy, if you only knew what I was gonna be at yes. <laughs> So if I knew, <laughs> what, what if I knew uh, how drastic my life was? It, it wasn't just. It's not all about me. It's not all about me. So um, you know, ooh, it's just not all about me. If I would have um, dealt with me, more it's not. It's not people, all about us. It's not all about us. It's, it's about not. Jesus. It's not. <laughs> It's not a lot. Um, <laughs> you know I'm not the singer. You just sing it. You gotta come in from oh. cues on time. Um, oh, Lord. so uh, like I tell everybody, before I got married, one thing for certain, I would have dealt with myself more. I would have dealt with myself honestly, and that's why I tell people now, whenever they're getting counsel from me, that's something you hear from me all the time. Deal with yourself honestly. Don't that's lie right. to yourself and say, "Oh, I'm good. I'm okay. This is not there." Because marriage doesn't make it go away. You know what I mean? So if you are dealing with self-esteem issues, deal with it. Don't think that, oh, it's going to go away once, you know, because there's some time, you know, after having kids and things of that nature. And, uh, yes. So um, I would have dealt with myself a little bit more. I mean, I would have dealt with myself honestly. But now I do. When In my prayers, um, I, will say, I wouldn't say now like I just started. I continue to. Mm -hmm. um, and in my prayers, I... I I am telling, I talk to the Lord like how I talk to anyone. Lord, this is, I'm, this is me. Lord, you know me. I can't mm -hmm. come to you mm -hmm. with no facade on. You already know you, you know. made me. So, right. yeah. So, I just come in and say, Lord, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what's on my heart. This is what troubles me about me. Mm -hmm. And then that, that helps me. Okay. And I just have to pause because... Brother Noah on YouTube said, we look so pretty. Oh, I love my little Noah. <laughs> Noah That's he, my godson. He's so cute. Ain't he cute? He's so cute. Okay. Thank you, Noah, for the compliment. I appreciate it. <laughs> so we're moving to a section that I call Let Me Be Spiritual, okay? Let me be spiritual. So which this is women... When I get off the cherubs lap. No, now. yeah, get off the ch chilling with cherubs. <laughs> I said chilling with cherubs and somebody put it in the comments. <laughs> which women or what type of women do you listen to for inspiration? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So I have always been the youngest in all the crowds that I've ever hung out with until I got um, older. And I, I realized I was out with my friends. I was like, I'm older. You know, I'm older than you. But I'm the, but old, I'm the young old friend. She, yes. She's I'm literally the, technically older than all of y'all, but not basically. Really. Basically. <laughs> this, is, this is mama for real here. This is mama. Um, who do I? Okay. So. I like to sit at those because this is not, I don't want to name some and then I forget a lot of people. I don't want to not name drop. So I would tell you the type of people that I, that I, um, um, glean from, I glean from those that are experienced, that I can, they have experience and that I can see wisdom all over them. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm working with the patient and I'm asking them different things while they're, while I'm doing therapy and whatnot, because I see wisdom all over them through, um, it, it's just, it's something mm -hmm. that, uh, attracts me and I, I can't tell you how I know it and I see it, but I just know it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like to glean from those that have gone through and Experience. are leaps mm -hmm. years about ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think a lot of times in our culture, we put aside our elderly and our elder, I we need, the elderly. we need them. We, we need the need church them. mothers. We, yes. Love yes. So um, sometimes I don't even, I don't even have, have to have a conversation. I just sit and I just watch them. Mm -hmm. I just observe them. I just watch their mannerisms. I watch how they deal with their children. Watch how they deal with their husbands. I watch how they deal with people, how they carry themselves. Um, you know, um, so that's the kind, those are the type of people I look for. I, if you, if you have experience, you're not messy. I don't like, I don't like the messy people. I'm not into the I, I'm, I'm not into the messies. I don't like the messy ones, okay? They, don't, they keep up drama. They keep up gossip. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like those that are be, that are honest with me. They tell me the truth. They correct me because I, I take in constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. I definitely uh, welcome it. That's true. So I, uh, I, I like to deal with those type of women. That's good. For certain. And so you should too, women. You absolutely. Should, absolutely. You should look to, you know, 
level, how would you say, level up? Level up. Level up. Say, level up. Don't always have everybody on the same playing field because you can't grow from there. You need somebody that's going to pull you. Challenge you, yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. So the next question is, what is your morning routine when preparing for the day? Morning routine. Well, Lord have mercy. Are you that coffee drinker in the morning? So some days, some days I can go through my stints where I love, like I don't really like the drink, the taste of coffee. I like the effects of coffee. So I don't, I can't say I'm a coffee drinker. I'm not a coffee drinker. I, I prefer tea more than mm-hmm. coffee. Mm-hmm. Morning. Well, as of now, I would not say I ha- I have one, but it's pretty lax. <laughs> it's definitely lax. Um, anything before I get up. I'm not a person. I'll tell you this. Any given day. When I wake up, I get up. I'm not a person that just, I have to be sick to kind of lay there for a long period of time. When I wake up, I jump up. I jump up. I get in the shower. Um, I get dressed. Uh, maybe even if it's not to go somewhere, I have at least a change of clothes on. And I have, an, an, a, you know, what I want to wear. And so if you call me in the last minute and say, hey, keep going. All I have to do is just switch up and just and put it on um, together. I learned that from my mom. My mom told me long time ago to, to always be ready because she believed us. And I was getting tired of being left. So I was like waking up before her, getting dressed and so forth and so on. So um, anything, I wake up and uh, try to make sure I take a moment before rushing off that I'm giving the Lord thanks. I'm thanking him. Um, um, nowadays, I have to I wake up and I'm like, what is today? What's today? And I got to go through Monday, Tuesday, know. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because we all... You know, with this I wouldn't know what day it was unless I was <laughs> so we're on this every day feels like life. Friday. So I try to wake up <laughs> and I just try to take in like uh, what I'm grateful for. So that way I don't get so frustrated about what I'm about to accomplish for the day or what I need to accomplish. I look at least what I accomplished yesterday and what I didn't. I can't get bogged down with that. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing me to have the ability to move and have my very being. If I'm rushing and I forget that, um, you know, I repent. Like, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't thank you. And I come mm-hmm. back to it and make sure. Um, so I, any other day, I'm going off to work. And then from work, I'm coming home and so forth and dealing with my family and whatnot. So right now, it's pretty lax. But I would say at least you can learn this from me. When you wake up, get up. Get your, get your day started. Get yourself started. Get yourself clean. Get yourself prepared. Because um, that could kind of pull you out of a sunken place if you are not, you know, going anywhere and so forth. That'll help pull you out of that sunken place that this quarantine will literally suck you, sink you into. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, how do you handle rejection? Or have you had to deal with rejection? Rejection. I was- <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, joking. I'm too cute for that. <laughs> who gonna reject the boot? No, I'm joking. Oh, who gonna reject the boot? No. Okay, so I'm just being, I'm just joking. I'm not having full, a good time. I'm not full of myself. Just, just joking. Saying, yes. Let me put this disclaimer in this. Let me put this disclaimer. I am a person that believes in having a good time. I am within reason. Sometimes we just get so serious, you know, we have to be so like all all the time. And that's that's just not me. That's that's not me. So I do joke and gesture as a saint. I am. I know some saints don't believe in joking and gesturing, but I do. It just in in joy. There's joy in Jesus. Yes. In its in its perspective, you know. Um, so rejection. So I would have to say, I don't um I that's I don't know. Like don't were you ever like were you picked last on the kickball team in school? Like no, nah, sports wise, I wasn't the greatest. <laughs> okay. I wasn't the greatest. That was so long, long ago. ago. That was some I'm so I'm really carefree. Like, okay. Whatever. You You're are lost. very you are. That's, that's your loss. Very, oh well. You go. know, I mean, I just go on and and, and and move on. I would have to say I would kind of answer that because we still in the spirit the spiritual. Let me be spiritual. So when it comes to, I wouldn't say the Lord rejects me. But when he tells me no, mm, that's good. I'm like, man. But this is what I do. Like sometimes it's like a hit. Like, oh, why you won't let me? So I have to go get go back and gather myself. Don't throw a tantrum because I'm telling you, you will make yourself look like a fool every time you throw a tantrum on God because mm-hmm. He already knows our end. So He knows, like, no, this is not it. I got something better. I got something else. So 
what I do is kind of gather myself and I said, well, Lord, what? Okay, if this isn't it, then you got to show me what's it. Mm -hmm. or, you know, give me peace with, you know, my, my current state. And, um, and even if you don't, I just got to be content. Learn to be content and keep it moving. That's good. That's good. And I think and that's a good perspective to have on rejection. So how do you overcome spiritual attacks? Oh, oh. Okay. So, you know, this is one of my favorites. I'm going to try my best. Let me see. Okay. So I'm going to really put myself on the time limit on this. <laughs> so spiritual attacks. I, I, deal with, I talk about so, uh, spiritual warfare all the time. Okay. okay. Yeah. Spiritual warfare is happening around us all the time. Whether you acknowledge it or not, it is occurring. <clears throat> How do I deal with it? The only way you can deal with it is through prayer, mm -hmm. through reading, studying. I always separate those two because reading and studying is two different things. Mm -hmm. Reading the word is just reading it. Studying it is taking it and dissecting mm -hmm. it and, and really um, involving yourself in the scripture, where you fit, who is he talking to sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, consecration. That's the only way you're going to deal with spiritual attacks. That's it. I call them out. I always say this all the time. If you're a member of Restoration, um, you ought to be able to throw it up on comments. I tell them all the time. You have to open up your mouth. Mm -hmm. You can't rebuke stuff in the name of Jesus in your head mm -hmm. and think stuff is going to go away. Right. Um, so submit to God is what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. First thing you got to submit to God. Mm -hmm. Then you have to resist the devil and then he, is, he will flee. Mm -hmm. That is the formula. So any any spiritual attacks... I make sure it wasn't something I brought on myself mm -hmm. by poor decisions because we don't want to put light on that. Mm -hmm. Some things were brought on by ourselves because of poor decisions, poor decision making, mm -hmm. or whatnot. Yep, there you go. Eric Boy can put it up there. Thank you, David. Everybody, can I get an open your mouth? Open your mouth in the you comments. Open your mouth. You have to open up. <laughs> Throw your it in there. Mouth. YouTube, somebody say open your mouth. Gotta open up your mouth. So I make sure it wasn't something brought on by myself. And if mm -hmm. it was, I need to repent about it. Whatever it may need to be, I submit to God. Mm -hmm. Make sure that I, you know, stand this it, right. or clean my slate, whatever it may be. Right. And then I go after it. I go after it. If I recognize the spirit through studying different spirits, I call you out by name. The mm -hmm. that I call you out by name. Whatever right. it may be, whatever the spirit may be, I call you out by name. I don't let them. At one point, it was... They could they could get me because mm -hmm. then I was I would shut my mouth up mm -hmm. and I would um, you know clam up but now I call them I call them out that's it I call them out so um, what books are you currently reading right now um, it's kid one two and three no I'm joking right <laughs> so I've been great math right <laughs> exactly Y'all, I'm over here rehearsing Sorry, myself over this. fractions on the nails all yes all that. <laughs> Uh, prepositions and all that stuff. I was like, I didn't even know the actual names of this stuff. <laughs> um, right now, um, um, I haven't been able to really read so, so much. But what I read recently, um, her name slips me, but this is The Lies Women um, Believe. Mm. That's reading both of them kind of simultaneously. I cannot think of her name right we'll now. Have her, uh, Sister Destiny, drop that in the comments. I can't believe I don't. I don't the know. author Demos. of. The moss, the moss, okay. uh, lies women believe, lies women believe. That is a good one. Oh my gosh, that's a juicy one. That's a juicy one. Um, <clears throat> so I would say her, and then she also has um, Adorn, she also has Adorn, it's mm -hmm. dealing with the tightest women, dealing with women being um, mentors, the mm -hmm. older women stepping up in, in ministry and being the mentors mm -hmm. that they need to be. How receptive do you believe young women are to older women? Um, and, I think and receiving now, now we are going through this whole mm -hmm. generational type mm -hmm. of you know I have an opinion and social media kind of exacerbates that type of mentality because mm -hmm. you know people always feel like they could just drop their thoughts and say mm -hmm. whatever it is that they mm -hmm. want to say and and it gives credit I guess um, I would say it's a challenge it definitely is a challenge but when it comes full circle they're gonna have to come back around they, mm -hmm. they just they just are because right. I definitely went through a phase in my life where I was smelling myself. My mama ain't know what she was talking about. And as I got older, Girl. I had to come back around and apologize. Now that's why we talk every that. single mm -hmm. day. Because she know what she's talking about. And mm -hmm. I didn't. And she had kids. And here I am telling her how to raise me who was a kid. Yeah. So um, I think, unfortunately, I, I think it, it's not as receptive just as a whole. Just as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, 
with our elderly or with uh, just our elders. Just as yeah, as yeah. a whole, this is not. Mm -hmm. It's not a good state. I agree with you. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And this is something that I said on one of the lives that I did. Like, you know, I certainly had to apologize to my mother. Like, I really, like, I question the decisions you made, and I have no idea. No idea. No idea. No idea. And we do have a guy. He right? wanted to create everything. No idea. Everything. We're going to tell him how he made us, and yeah. how he did this, and how you do this. I, yeah, we don't know what we do. We don't know what we do. <laughs> so, what advice would you give, um, or do you have for women entering their 30s? Ooh, 30s. 30s are good. 30s. Right? Oh, my gosh. So, good. this is my last chapter of my 30s, y'all. Yes. I'm going to embrace 40s. I'm, I'm not a person that's hung up over age and things of that nature. I'm just not. So, 30s, though. 30s was my year. This was my decade where um, I honestly, <clears throat> where I actually feel grown. This was me. I'm an adult. <laughs> this is where I have to show. You know, I thought I was grown at 21. Oh, I thought I had. Oh, you couldn't tell. I thought I was oh, grown what? at 18. I thought I was. But until you, you have to buy your own hot water tank, your own something, whatever. Hey, nobody else. Hey. Yo, yeah, like nobody's helping you whatsoever. Texas, right. Nobody's helping you whatsoever. Um, and that's within, you know, of course, situations. Yeah. So don't take everything I'm saying, you know, to heart. 30s, so though. 30s is a year where I think where you ought to be getting some stability. Yeah. 20s is where you're really learning, you're learning. finding out yourself and figuring out what it is. Mm -hmm. You find, you're figuring out you. Honestly, you're trying to figure out you, you're trying to figure out this life. 30s is that year where you ought to be getting some stability. So you, yes, so yeah. you ought to be gleaning towards stability, walking towards it, wanting it, wanting to be stable. So looking at the resources to get you there, whether it be financially, whether it be spiritual, whether it be social, whatever it may be, these are the years where I feel at your 30s, you ought to be looking to be settled. And let me go back to the singles, okay? Because you're going to be like, ah, so you saying I should be this and that? You can be all those things and still be single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Stability is nothing to do with. Right. So marriage. you can still be you can still be single and still be stable. So um <clears throat> look to um uh, all the errors, all the flaws, all the things you did in your twenties. Learn from them and don't repeat them during the de this decade. Because the older you get, you lose your rebound effect, okay? Yeah, it's hard to bounce back. Remember when we was younger, we could fall out on our knees. Yeah. And so far, I was skating with my daughter. I fell down, and she lapped me twice. Did she was before. I was still getting up. I told you I just got so, a bike. So, 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 you so easy. That's how life is. <sighs> you don't get up so easy and so quick and be able to make and recover. So it, it's time, you know, in 30s, integrity, build your character should be built. You you you, you ought to have a, a firm standard about how you carry yourself. That's how you should be living out your 30s, okay? Because the older you get, I'm telling you, you ain't going to be able to keep rebounding and keep rebounding and keep making blunders and so forth. That's All right. right? Right. Work on your relationship with Christ. Christ. Work on your relationship with Christ. Your credit. Work on your credit. <laughs> get your credit to and character, and we'll your character, the three C's, the we'll three C's, Christ, credit, character. character. Somebody it. can put that down in here. Put it in Christ, there. character, credit. I, 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 I said what Christ I said. Christ always got to say first, but however you character first, and then credit. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Thank you. Okay, so the next question is: What is your quiet study time routine? What does God? Um, what time does God? What is your time with? What does my time with God look like? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I wake up before all my family. Okay. Um, so then, like I said, I wake up. That's the time where I'm kind of like, you know, praying um, and, and being being grateful. Because we a lot of times when we go into prayer, we go straight into I want, I need, I need, I want, I need. I just learn uh, um, through um, age and growing up and, you know, going through the cycles of life mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, because the scripture says, seek ye the kingdom of God in his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then the latter says all these other things. Other things yeah. So making sure that I'm being grateful and so forth. And, and, and when I first wake up praying, um, uh, and most of the time it is when I'm in my car, 
because I spend, I have a, an hour drive to work. So most of the time, besides outside of this quarantine, um, I'm going back and forth to work. So my mornings is is him and I in my car mm -hmm. uh, with my music, and we I'm talking to him just like how I'm talking to you. Um, like Lord, just show me, tell me what to say today. You know, allow your you to come up in in the session, a therapy session. Um, you know, allow somebody to um, come to me and and or something up in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Just really talking. A lot of times we put a lot of um, weight on how to pray. Mm -hmm. the, the formula of prayer. Mm -hmm. So people kind of pull back from it because they feel like they don't do it like this person. They don't do it like that person. It's just communicating with God. Mm -hmm. And everybody won't do it the same way. Um, so it's just communicating. So I usually, I'm in, I'm in my car with, and it's just him and I, and we just talking. Mm -hmm. My my range of genre as far as Christian music, I mean, it can go commission to Lecrae and the your minute, you know, and throughout the whole drive or whatnot. Right. I mean, it varies, but I'm, I'm I'm listening to him. Sometimes I just put on a Bible and I let him, uh, the narrator, read to me, and that's that's usually how my time is with God. And again, um, on the days or at those times where I'm studying. It may not be like a full on hour of study. It may be, you know, 10 minutes here because I have kids. So it may be 10 minutes here and, you know, a little bit more time there, a little bit more time. And this is what I tell people. A lot of times when they feel like you're studying, like you have to study the whole entire chapter. Sometimes you just grab one scripture mm -hmm. and you learn that scripture. You learn the basis of the scripture. What is he saying? What is he? And learn it and get it on the inside versus you. So that way, when you're going through something, you'll be able to pull it out versus trying to study a whole chapter and, mm -hmm. and you know, try to, you know, do the whole apologetics and everything, all that extra genesis and all that other stuff. Yeah, it, just, it can be a little bit. Just, just pull the scripture and, 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 and master that bad boy. That's good. Right? That's good. And you also covered the, the, the next question you covered it in your last question, which was okay. prayer can be overwhelming. Where do you start? And you covered that. With yes. Yes. Just just literally just talking to him. And that's the thing. Prayer should not be overwhelming. Talking to your creator should not be overwhelming. It's just like how I'm talking to you. Make it that simple because he's listening. He's listening. He's listening. Make it just like I'm talking to you. Yeah. OK, I would, you know. Times I'm full on tongues and I could be on the highway full on tongues. Listen, I don't care who around me, I ain't talking to them, I ain't dealing with them as long as I'm being safe, uh, you know, swerving and whatnot. So, yes, yeah, it don't let it overwhelm you. Very good. Don't let it overwhelm you. What have you been studying lately? Have you been studying any specific scripture, what? text, books? What have I been studying lately? Mm -hmm. I don't, I won't necessarily say a certain topic. Um, at this point, I have not been. Um, one of my two most things I like to talk about more than anything is uh, deception. Uh, um, that's one of my favorite topics, deception. And another one is wisdom. Um, always can go to the book of Proverbs. I can always read the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. um, so I won't necessarily say there is a particular thing that I am studying at this point. I just open up and I just read. Um, like maybe the first of the day, and mm -hmm. I just dissect that and kind of read that and so forth on my on my Bible app. Fantastic. Okay, this next section is called "Handle Your Business." Okay, okay. Handle your business. so how does it feel to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and do something you love? And I think you already tackled that because you talked about how refining um, is is it is redefining redefining mm -hmm. um, so really is a business that found you because of your love for etiquette and those kind of, kind of thing. So I won't have you to re-answer that. Thank you. Um, I would like to start, <laughs> I would like to start a business and I'm a busy mom working in ministry. Any tips? And I also venture to say you covered that as well. Yes. She talked about um, if you were not on. You got to compartmentalize everything. Right. Okay. Don't look to say you're going to be, I'm going to just take care of everything. No, take 10, 20 minutes. However, you can segment your life. Excuse me. Do that. Do that. Good. And that'll help you stay on task. This is a good one. How do you budget and still support and sacrifice in ministry? Oh, God. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. One thing for certain um, that I won't ever do is dupe God. 
tithing, give my offering. If um, there's a sacrifice, um, sacrificial offering that he puts in my spirit to give, I don't ever question him. That is a that is a place that I have grown from. And I know everybody is not there, but I've seen him do it time and time and time again. He has supplied every single one of our needs um, because I've, we've been faithful and I'm including my spouses because we've been faithful in giving because we've been faithful in giving. So um, let me make sure I'm answering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you so, budget and still support? How do I budget? So first of all, he come, he gets the top because it's the earth is the Lord. The full is there. They dwell there. And all of it is his. Mm -hmm. So it's not mine anyway. He just lending me some. So he gets the top straight off from off the rip. He gets the top. There's no question about it. And then after that, then I budget uh the I budget the rest on what I of course what needs to be taken care of gets taken care of. And my wants, they you know things that I may want, I may not be able to get them at that time. A lot of times I kind of just um per pay I may um deal with maybe one thing or get one thing that I that I really want or like or whatever it is that I can afford um at that time and then I wait I wait for the, the the you know latter time or you know I go and I put that bug in my husband's ear like that's not <laughs> hey yo <laughs> let me see let me see About I that. shared an Amazon that list I gotta know wish list one no. it. so we'll bunch it so <laughs> again and then and, and what I can say for certain is growing my your your you kind of put things on what really matters mm -hmm. you put things on what really matters so uh now that my kids are getting older i'm really looking more to spend towards traveling versus getting them things and having things so i'd much rather just save and travel and, and spend my money on traveling versus just getting them something because you don't i mean they they get it and they play with it or they like it. it for a few seconds and then they don't deal with it no more. But if they if you've taken them somewhere, there's trips they still talk about to this day that you know we saved up for and we gone on and they still talk about it to this day. So I mean as they you get older prices. those memories those, are priceless. They are, they are. So as you get older, you kind of kind of balance what really matters. Yeah. Okay, so from that, it comes off the top. Hit what belongs to God comes off the top. And I don't play with that. And then everything else, I see what, you know, what's next priority. Take care of that. I make sure because I work and because I choose to work, I make sure I get myself of something from that. And then, you know, I, I save the rest. So what I will can give you a formula for this. Whatever you tie, try to, if you can, tie to your savings and leave it there and don't touch it. I would say that. So whatever your tithe is, Give that tithe and then try to give a, a ten, another 10 to yourself and don't touch it. Put it in your savings and then work with what you have if you are able to. But definitely you should put something away every single time. And if you don't believe me, look at the state that we're in right now. You, you know, with what's going on with the, the COVID-19 and quarantine. So put something away each each pay. Okay? Very good advice. Because you worked hard for it. You should, you know, see the benefits of it. Very good. Okay, so this next topic is called motherhood, and we're almost at the end. Motherhood, almost. motherhood, motherhood. I don't know if I can answer. There's no questions. hood like motherhood. Okay, how? I don't know if I can do. I don't know now. You may know. <laughs> you may probably want to ask me post quarantine. You got it. You got it. You can do it. I'm joking. How you. do I instill virtue in my daughters as a single mom? Here we go again. And. Okay. <laughs> Or a manly foundation as a single mom, I guess, okay. of sons. Okay, I understand. Okay, so, um, again, the best way is you have to make sure you are living virtuous, for one. Because it's not, one thing I learned from raising kids is it's not about what you say. Kids, they what you say, they like, I hear you, but it's what they see is what they are going to mimic, is what's gonna resonate and what's gonna stick. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you are being literally the living example, just like Christ was the living example for us. He didn't just tell us to go out and do these things. We have actual record of him doing these things so we can follow in his footsteps. So 
that will be the answer to the first part of that. Mm-hmm. No, I'm assuming as a as a mom who is raising boys, daughters and then boys. So as raising daughters, if you, they can lead by example, and even your sons need to see you as a mother leading by an example, so that they go out and they when they get older and marry, that they ought to be choosing people or women of virtue as well. Makes sense. That's good. So when it comes to your your single mother and you're raising boys, I would say um, put them in the because you can't as a woman you just can't you can't you're teach. not a man you can't you can't teach and women stop telling them that you're the dad to no you're just a mom. Let me tell you something. You're just a mom, and I'm not. I'm you, only got, perfect you only got you only got one holiday. You can only have Mother's Day. <laughs> You have stop home. telling your kids you're the mother and, and the, the father. father. You're no, not. you can only be the mother. That's all you can be. Stop tricking yourself. You can only be the mother. That's only it. Mother. Okay? So you can only be the mother. Um, put them in place. Put them in the, the feet of people that when it comes to men, not your booze and all that. Put them into people that have integra- integrity. Put them in in, in the position to glean from those, whether it be a reputable uncle, a grandfather, a teacher, um, those type of things. Let them let them help you. A lot of times as moms, what we do is we want to control everything. And when it comes times for the the men to correct other boys because they've been a boy, you want to jump in and you want to say, you can't tell that to my son. Don't talk to my son. This, 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 that. Or you pull them from the environments that truly help them. Mm-hmm. I see sometimes in ministry where you see moms are coming in their sons and coming and their kids are gleaning to different men in the in, men, in ministry and you can see their behavior changing. You can see them wanting to be better. Not to say that the people that they are are, are Witnessing are completely perfect. They're not. They're just being a good example. And then they you'll mess around and just strip them from that. You, whether you stop coming or whether you stop bringing them or stop, you know, introducing them or put or keeping them in environments that are one stable and two that can truly um, affect them. So that will be my take on that. Put them in the presence of those that can help you. Lighten your low and let them let men correct other men. Let them do it. Yeah, yeah. let them do it. That's okay? good. That's let good. them do it. That's good. Um, how do you or do you have devotion or study time with your children? What does that look like? What should that look like, especially for a single parent? I don't think it. I don't it, think single necessity. It's, it has a yeah, singleness have nothing to do with it. Anything but do you have devotion all time? With my children, um, so it's not like a, it's not like a certain, it's not like a, um, a certain time um, per se, especially with the time constraints and things with their schooling and stuff like that. Um, we do have at one point. This is what we were doing. We it's, it just kind of varies and it changes. So on the way to school, they would each have to take turns leading prayer. Okay, so they would lead prayer and so forth and so on on their way to school. Um, I do I have devotionals that I buy for them and that they read. Um, we did have a journal that we would share and no other per like each child with my daughters, because my son, of course, can't write. We have journals and we'll write back and forth and you wouldn't share it with your sister and different things of that nature. And we can talk about different things and I can talk with them about God decisions through that. Um, so they wouldn't feel like Oh, mama trying to beat my head over, you know, beat me over the head with this and so forth and so on. They were being influenced, but they didn't realize they were being influenced. Then it's times where we, uh, I just play gospel music in my home because that's all I listen to. Um, so we play gospel music in our home and, you know, they play church. We all kinds of, it's all kinds of ways. I won't say it's the same type of thing every single day. It's not. It's not. What it should look like with you in your home, you should definitely have, you know, com- conversations with your children about the scriptures, read them different stories of the Bible. Um, I ask them what happened in Sunday school. What did they learn in Sunday school? We talk about the service after Sunday service. We talk about it. You know, what was the pastor talking about? And they like, daddy, you to my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the sermon about? And you know, they take notes. I have them to my, the oldest one. She takes notes. The other two try. Um, but I ask them to take notes and things of that nature. So converse with them about it um, and, and allow them to, you know, express 
their thoughts about it. Don't, you know, don't, don't like pull the, uh, however you do it. Let me just put it that way. Let me not tell you how to do it, but just make sure you're having those conversations and make sure that you are instilling the word in them so that in times where peer pressure is at them, the word is stirred up in them. I'll leave it at that. That's good. Um, this section, and this is our last section, is called right. Hey is First Lady. Oh, gosh. Uh -huh. I don't know about this. Yes, you got it, you got it, you got it. So what do you love about your church and being First oh, Lady? Oh, my gosh. Restoration Church of Jesus Christ in Dayton, Ohio. I love, love, love the people of God there. I love them. I love the saints. They are so awesome. I mean, in this quarantine, they have been staying connected. They have been, um, you know, checking in on us and, and checking in with each other because it's not all about us only. It's, you know, making sure they're checking in with each other. I love them. I that They are, I would have to say the people, of course, the spirit of God being in there, the word preach, the music, all that. But when it comes down to it, what I miss most uh, about it all is the people. I Definitely. love them to life. I love them, love them, love them. Every single one of them. And when I don't see them, it saddens me. And when they're going through things, it saddens me. Um, so I, I would have to say the people. Definitely the people. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you prepare for the role or charge of being first lady? And you did address that as layers, how mm -hmm. God challenged you at different stages in your life. So how, yes. So I, I, I would say this. Let mm -hmm. me first of all, I had to change my perspective of what first lady, because it's really like, um, you know, what is that? And I had to tell myself that's just the title that the church called me. I'm pastors help me, and however I can help him meet whatever meet he needs met. That is where that's where I put my stance, and that's where. So now it's in ministry. Now it's with you know building, sustaining. A church members and things of that nature and however i can help them um do that that whether it might be by teaching by counseling um whatever it may be so i don't look at a you know a topic a title a first lady as mm -hmm. you know like oh some something in the limelight so and it comes down to it i must help me so if i'm meeting his needs or you know helping meet the needs that's i'm, I'm fulfilling my purpose in that. So wonderful. Okay, so what's the toughest thing you've had to overcome within the ministry? The toughest thing I had to overcome in ministry. Oh my goodness, really? You want to know this? It's really easy. Public speaking. <laughs> Public speaking, getting up and talking in front of people when they looking at you like you have three eyeballs. Um, or a cowlick, or I don't know, like they looking at you like uh, you got a hole in your shirt or something. I don't know. I would definitely have to say public speaking when people are not responding because saints, believe it or not, as much as I love you, sometimes you sit. You y'all sit sometimes, and I this, this <laughs> is no indictment on restoration. What does that this mean? Is, tell them what, tell them what every, it means when you sit. This is this is at every church because you know my my husband was an evangelist prior, and we you know we visit churches. These this is everywhere, and y'all need to stop. And this is going back to this question support. When we go back to support, get with your pastor and first lady when they're preaching, when they're teaching. Show that I'm receiving this. Mm -hmm. You know, like your posture re receptive. Let me show you a receptive posture. You know, you, you're you're up upright. You you're you're looking at the person. You may be smiling. You could be nodding. You could be you know. And in church uh, culture, you know, we yeah, amen. You know, depending on what your church, you know, we get with you. You stand up. You clap. <laughs> right. Receptive is you just sitting there like this, your hands. This is you can't receive nothing with your hands like this. You can't receive nothing. That's that's free. That's that's free. I should charge off for that little bit of etiquette tip. But no, that so it's public speaking. Public speaking, I would have to say, was my um was I had to get I had to get over it. And then when getting when the Lord would tell me to say and do something, and I would be uh, you know, I would be fearful. I, I would be, 
I would be like, you know, Jeremiah, oh, you know, what they gonna think of me? What they gonna, you know what I mean? They, listen, if they reject what you say, they rejected me, they not rejecting you. And now, I mean, really, if you reject me, going back to that question, I'm just like, whatever. So, um, <laughs> I'm hitting all these questions. Looking at me, and I'm looking at you. You're looking at me, and I'm looking at you. So, you looking at me, and I'm looking at you. <laughs> that, that's a meme out there that got with fuck that. And that I love the mess out of me. That gift, that gift. But, um, that's my friend's so, brother. Is it? I love the mess out of that. I sit there to pass for probably about three or four times a day if I can. Um, so, so public speaking, I would have to say one, getting comfortable um, with, um, with, because everybody don't necessarily, they're not receptive of constructive prison, but I had to give you, because I love you, I have to give you what I have to give you to better you. Because it had to be done to me. It wasn't always, you know, peaches and cream for me coming up. And if it, and if they always gave me the roses without the thorns, I would have a false sense of who I am in God. Right. All right. So let's let's ask this question. And I think right. you tell it, is being a first lady a calling? Let's speak biblically. First. Is being a first lady a calling? I would have to say. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Cause this is kind of this is some layers to this question. Cause this this question can get you in trouble by some, and then others are like. So it depends on what do you consider a calling. It depends. Well, biblically on speaking, what you are, you know, are you are you looking at like bishop and you know elder? Or those are you are you putting that? Some that of those top? some of those are titles, and then right. some of those are calling. So right. those unfold the fivefold ministry gifting. Um, so if we're speaking toward the Bible, like is first lady in the Bible, the answer would be, no, 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 no. Just answer it. Honestly, I would see here. Here they come. It's saying lately. This not that. I would have to say the actual, <laughs> term. the actual term. If you was to look in a concordance, you would not see first lady. Okay. Okay. You don't see. Can However, I, can I just give you that. Can I just give y'all that? Yes. Okay. Now y'all. We want to be clear. Y'all can exegesis. Found on that. Found y'all can exegesis. This is in the past. All of that. Um, exegesis. Exegesis. I always say Genesis. Exegesis. Uh, exegesis. Exegesis. Y'all can get on me on that. Listen to that. That's probably gonna come up. Become a meme. <laughs> church laugh. No, you. Don't. Um. So so no, the actual term. Is not uh, the actual term. It's not. Um, I, I just I would say that I would say that. Well, Are there sin? You hear you hear the assistant. Um, but there are examples. Sir, our batteries on twenty percent. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are. I would say there are um, ladies that will. I can't even say necessarily examples. I don't want to say this question. How do I want to answer this question? What does um, it mean? To, what does it mean to be? Let me help. So, let me so, ask you a question. What does it mean to be attached to somebody that is called? Oh, so being attached to someone that is called is you take on the calling. Let me put it that way. That's it may necessarily that makes it clear. It may not necessarily be a calling, but you take on the responsibility of the calling. Okay. There are now, okay, because then there's another layer that I want to say mm -hmm. there, it, it could be looked at as a calling because there's things that the Lord will have you do in that position mm -hmm. that no other woman, that he, that no other woman will do in ministry. That's it. So it's, I mean, that question got so many layers. Like I, I, it truly, it truly does. Um, not every person could be in this position. This is, take me, take, take this, take this how I'm taking it. Uh, I'm not throwing a light on myself. I'm not making myself because I didn't. I didn't put myself. We don't need no disclaimer, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is because there's things you're gonna have to endure. That some people just gonna be like, I'm not gonna put up with this. There's gonna be some things that you have to. Whether it's coming at you, whether it's coming at your companion, whether it's coming at your children, whether it's coming at the members. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you hold them um, responsible to a certain extent. Or put it this way, you hold you care for them so much. That you um, that you care about what happens to them mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. So there's a lot. So uh, not everybody can carry out that mm -hmm. 
this this world. Mm -hmm. you, just, you just cannot. You can't be haphazard in this world. You can't be messy in this world. You can't be loose in this world. You cannot because there's a lives that you will affect forever. Mm -hmm. There's some people that, you know, they sit and they'll talk with me that they won't talk with pastor because of personal reasons or something. Not that they don't like them. It's just whatever their issue may be, may be personal and it may be on the level that he cannot help them, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to be able to help them confidentially and, and go on from that and not look at them any different. You know, that's another thing. If you can't, if you can't hear about the sins of the people without dealing with them differently after hearing about their sin, you are not, in no way position, mm -hmm. you don't need to be in this position. You cannot. If people can offend you and you hold that, mm. you know, you're not ready. You got to be able to look at people and look at the spirit that's behind and deal with the spirit that's behind the individual. Because some people do things intentional and some people do things um, unintentional. Mm -hmm. Okay. And whether you, either one, you still got to deal with them. Right. You still got to deal with them. Okay, and so if you are the type like I ain't gonna fool with him, and that, and that, you know that's that's not you're not fit. For you're, not ready. you're not ready. <laughs> it's not for you. Um, no. so I'm gonna throw one more thing out there before we conclude here. So, mm -hmm. um, so. someone asked the question, "What does it feel like to be a first lady?" And I think you kind of have hit that as well. It's so, wonderful. what? A <laughs> <laughs> great. I don't know, really, honestly. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how. I just feel, I'm, I'm me, I'm myself. Yeah, I'm, that's like, so that's, that's, that is like, actually, I'm like, how to feel to you? I'm just yeah, me. I'm just, I'm just me. So um, what advice do you have? What you call me. So what advice do you have for ministers dating? Ministers that dating. are dating. Ministers, but both, both. It doesn't matter uh, what gender is. Okay. Good, this is good ministers question. dating. Ministers dating. Um, I have some advice. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> Now. Why are you laughing? Like <laughs> so, ministers dating. One thing I would say more than anything is hold the standard up. Keep the standard up no matter what. Keep the standard up. up. They ought to see you as they should see you, and they should not see you anything less than. So keep the standard up. And if you, if they do, you ought to have integrity to go back and apologize and say, I'm sorry, I wasn't being an example. I wasn't, you know, this, this wasn't, I wasn't, you know, exemplifying the life of Christ or whatnot. Um, so keep the, hold the standard up. Hold the standard up when it comes to dating, the person you're dating. Don't, you know, don't just, don't grab anything. Say it again. Okay? Say it again in the mic. Don't. Where's grab, the mic? We need to don't mic. grab just anything. <laughs> I, please don't just grab anything because it will affect your ministry. It will. it will affect your ministry. It will affect your reach. It will affect everything. It will affect your anointing. And trust me, that's what the enemy is after all. I mean, that's what he wants. You you don't matter to him. He wants your anointing. Mm -hmm. He wants your power and influence that the Lord uses through you to change and alter people's minds in their life. That's what he wants. So don't go after just anything. Keep a standard. I remember when I was dating um pastor. This is our very first date. He said, I wouldn't be with you um, if you hadn't, because at the time I had I was in the back sitting state when he met me. And um he invited me to church. Very first time I met him, he invited me to church. And then when we went out on our date, I was just trying to enjoy my salad. And he was like, I wouldn't even be out here with you had you not given your life to Christ. And this, this, and that. He said, I wouldn't, you, we would just be, you would just be my sister in Christ. And I didn't realize that until I got married. Like he really told me the standard. That was my standard. That was it. We got in the car. We don't listen to gospel. We didn't listen to none of that. You know anything else? You know say, it was a, it was a standard. Say, it say. was a standard, but it what pulled me. That pulled me up. That pulled me up, and that's what you should be. You should now. When I say don't get anything now, oh gosh, Lord, did I just open up another? We got one? time, first lady. It's eight twenty nine. We got time. time. Okay. So what I what I mean by this? Don't. Because what a lot of times what people do is they look at some people's relationship and they think it's going to happen just like that. No, mm -hmm. it may not happen like that for you. OK, maybe you and your girlfriend right now, y'all living together and you've been 
together for 10 years or whatnot and you got kids and you know then you come out and you guys come to find live um christ or one person gets saved this person say you can everybody's story will be different but being a single person right now you are not and you know you are planning to date someone keep the standard keep the standard mm -hmm. okay don't lessen your standard. What is the standard? The will of God. How is the will of God? What is God would be pleased in anything that I'm doing? If you do that, you'll be okay. Trust me, you'll be okay. So that way you won't have to get into the details. Well, can I go to the movie? Can I I'll listen? Because some things are fence laws. Uh, stick with the standard. Stick with the word of God. Stick with it. Okay? Stick with that standard. Don't just go out grabbing anything. Don't. That's Don't. That's Let the person get delivered. Okay? Let the person hmm. get delivered. Okay? Let, I'm just gonna end call Let the person delivered. be delivered. Okay? <laughs> if you want to spell it with a T at the end or you want to spell it properly with just the E, just get delivered. Let them resemble change. Let them show you that they are changing for Christ. They're not just doing this as a, uh, you know, because a lot of times women we get he go to church with you, or he you invite him to church, he show up one time, or whatever. He just come and but there's no change. We get so caught up on the form of godliness. You can tell when somebody's actually living something. That's it. Okay? So don't get caught up in please, please. Somebody said they got a question. Is yeah, so the question was people? so her question was what if they just became a minister, which is kind of like your scenario because Pastor had not been a minister very long. He was I actually a deacon. Minister. He was a he deacon. He was actually right. a deacon. Right, yeah. He was a deacon. And he and he told me, like, when he like he came and picked me up for the first time at church, he said, I'm gonna be there to pick you up early because I gotta open up the doors. I gotta mm -hmm. be there. And I mean, I mean, it was no under there was no room for questioning what his what his stance on because he was sincere about his calling. Yes. And it there was no question of it. Sometimes you guys, I find people where they are um these people are finding out that you go to church after be knowing you for six summer. Like, what you been going? What how long you been going to church? I've been going all my life. Really? We ain't never had a conversation about God. What when you mean? met Jesus, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But that was all. That was from the jump. And trust me, don't feel like oh, if I tell them that first lady, then they ain't gonna want to go out with me. That you just literally. You got that's a filter. You just laugh. I mean, come on, right, right. come on, come on, come on. You don't want to catch everything. Okay. Can I offer my piece of money? Yes. This please. is your show. I'm just here to support yes. it. Yes. Offer. <laughs> don't share all of your business on social media. We don't have to know every person you date every other three months. Uh, yeah. So I, I had a We don't need to know. We had, don't need to know. I had a whole singles class. And I all things are lawful. Oh, yes. 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 So. Practice some discretion. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Practice discretion. Yes. Okay, we absolutely. don't need to know your first date and what y'all ate and, and where y'all no, went. And how, treat so, us like your children. Don't tell, we don't want to find don't out until y'all are about to get married. That's like, it. Like seriously. Like so seriously. And the same thing, if you are dating or you're about to date or thinking of that and you have children, don't let them meet everybody. They should not meet your child unless it is, unless, unless it's some talk, unless y'all, I mean, come on, unless it's like, this is serious. It. This is it. Because what happens is your children meet the person, they're engaged, they they uh, engaging with the person, and then the person, then y'all don't work out, and it's like, you're going through the breakup and your kids are going through the breakup. Yes. And that's not fair to them. Right. And then another thing, going back to being virtue, mm -hmm. you don't show. Listen, listen, and everybody shouldn't be coming to your house. That's, that's it. Going back to boundaries. That's it. We about to wrap all this up. All of that's it. Everybody shouldn't be coming to your house. That's everybody it. shouldn't just. Know. I mean, you should not. I raised the you son. Should not. I raised my nephew as my son, and he can tell you the number of people he's seen in the house. He can tell you seventy nine. We have a heckler in the house. Something is wrong with him. Something is wrong with him. No, seriously, when I was married, that's the man that, that my nephew saw in the house. And, and you are, as a as a mother, teaching your son. Exactly. You're teaching your son. Because mm -hmm. uh, then he would think this is what all women oh, do. Oh, numbers. This Flip is what all women do. Right. Right. Flip right. right. 
Um, you will be te- you you'll be instilling a, a spirit of inf- infidelity in them. You don't even realize it. Um, so listen, y'all. That's I can't good. tell you how much to not not. You gotta set those Roger. boundaries. You gotta be selective. You gotta be first selective. of all, if the Lord throw those red flags out, stop ignoring the red flags. Red flags do not turn green; they stay red. Okay. Period. You will not change those red. Flags. A stop sign don't change. Oh, you will not change those red flags. <laughs> Only the Holy Ghost can do the, the Lord changing. Mm-hmm. So move out the way, okay? And then if it's a green light to go, then that's when you go, yeah. okay? Trust, Trust me. It. If I was not that person in that, if I, I'm telling you right now, I, I, you listen, I wouldn't, I, it would be somebody else. Cause I'm 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 serious. She he, got in the car and he was like, "Are you ready for Jehovah's return?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, in so many words, in so many words. But I respect, but I respect him. I respect him as a man of God to this day because of how he carried You're serious. Himself. How he carried himself. Seriously. How he cursed. Did he make you know mistakes and so forth and so on? Yes. But how he carried himself, uh-huh. even, I mean, trust me, trust me. I'm telling you, keep the standard up. Don't That's grab it. anything. And listen, those red flags are there. When they're there, walk away. Save yourself a bunch of heartache and pain. Because women, I mean, men cry too. Y'all be crying in the car too. <laughs> you don't cry in the car. Like y'all don't cry in the car. Y'all cry too. Y'all cry do. Car, so you save car. yourself a lot of pain, a lot of save yourself. Save yourself all of that. Okay, I'm telling you, they're there for a reason. Save yourself. That's it. That's good. That, that's Save yourself. Good. Save that's yourself. I'm processing that. That's good. Um, and also, don't treat people that you're not married to like your husband or wife. Please do not. Please do not. Dating is just dating. We just go meet that's up it. and we want a Chipotle and then that's it. When so when my former pastor walk and you better pay for it. When my former pastor used to say, I used to think like, well, what, what does that mean? But it after it I got is, married, it, it makes sense. Dating is different. just that. It's mm-hmm. just that. It's nothing more than that. That's and if you go into it deeper than that, you're gonna, you're gonna your feelings gonna be hurt. You gonna oh, be ready to, you you gonna gonna shoot somebody. You and the kids gonna be crying in the car over him. Well, Uncle Bobby. <laughs> Oh, oh, God. God. That's just a different name. <laughs> That's just Ronnie. Ronnie. That's a Ronnie. Ronnie. We're going to do all of the new edition of Bobby right here. <laughs> <laughs> all of them had to do that. We're being comical, but it's very serious. Serious, it's y'all. Very serious. serious. When, it, when you date, you have to think about you have to think about your ministry. Mm-hmm. And when you are getting, when you are attaching someone to you, when you that's of course when when you when you're dating and with the prospect of being um, going into marriage, you have to think about this person is going to be part of your ministry because you guys become one. I used to always think my husband ministry was separate and I'm separate. He can go do his thing. That, that doesn't work. His ministry is my ministry. You know understand what I'm saying? We are one. Okay, so um, you know how I carry myself. I have to consider him. I have to consider him. It's not just about me going back to that. It's not just about me. And so if you have a person that's out there, they, they, they're, they, they reckless and messy. And they're, they don't, they don't respect you. They don't respect what you do. They don't follow anything that you do. They don't believe anything that you do. That ain't it. That is not it. If I am literally, if, if he was going to West heaven, but here I am, like, no, nah, this is this stupid, this and that, this and that. Why you gotta do that? I don't understand why you gotta why you gotta go to church. I don't understand why you gotta read the Bible. I don't understand why you gotta pray. That is not in it. Peace. Peace out. Peace out of that. Yeah. Once you get tight, once you get um, you know, caught up or 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 what is the word that I'm looking at? Tied down. Mm. Once you get tied down of that, it's not easy. Once especially legally, once you get, legally get tied down through marriage and all that other stuff, it's not easy to get now. And it's a lot, you know, that you gotta undo. So instead of undoing, how about we just do it right? Okay, that's good. Speaking do of, you guys, uh, you can't not being able to separate the two. Um, and I'll, this is gonna be the final question of the night. All the right, question this is, is it. this is it. Are the times where you help pastor with his word, and they said this specifically because we know you got a word in your belly, <laughs> and you talked about this a little bit earlier. 
Okay. Where are the times where you help Pastor with his word? Like act like like sat down and helped him like write a sermon? No, you didn't have to go that far. I mean just No. Have you said something that inspired his word? Pastor has first lady inspired you. All the time. Okay. I was about to, I, was I get credit say. for stuff she say all the time. You should give her credit in public. <laughs> I think about it all the time. I think about it's it. It's called plagiarism. Depending on what they want. <laughs> I, teach, I, teach my kids, I teach my kids that now. I'm like, sign your torches. I don't know what I don't know what they supposed to be doing. So I mean, yes, fourth grader, you got to sign. APA, MLA, what are y'all? I doing? be forgetting that she said it. I be in the spirit at the moment. But how you didn't forget what was said, but you forgot who said it. But he does say the Lord has said it. And I'm like, yeah. So I Lord, do I don't, I don't, Lord, a.k.a. Lorenza. <laughs> it should be the Lord. It Lord Lorenza. Lorenza. I'm going to call her that from now on. Lorenza. No. Lorenza. No, I, 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 um, I don't take I don't take offense to that at all. It, if it is something that the Lord does to be just like. It's, <laughs> it's not me. The Lord, the Lord don't take, the Lord don't give his glory to no Body, That's Lord right. don't give us glory to nobody, so it's not me. It's the <laughs> Lord that used psycho sources. Um, psycho sources. Yeah. The Lord used to me. I think this class just unraveled. It's, it's good though. This is good. <laughs> you know. But so actually, sitting down and help him um, <laughs> prepare a sermon, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Every time, if you're a member of Restoration, it's so crazy. Every time I teach Sunday school and then he preach, or literally that day, we it's some overlapping that I talk, the and there's something that he. I mean, it's it's crazy. It is crazy. Sometimes the Lord deals with me with certain stuff, and I don't necessarily go to him because I don't want to influence him. Um, and what he may say, or you know, I don't want to do that. I, I'm real prayerful on I things that I bring. <laughs> but no, I'm saying it's. I'm real Same prayerful best. about how I. And um, what I bring to him, you know, I'm, I'm prayerful on what I, you know, how I bring it, what I bring, because uh, I want him to be truly just operating in the spirit, not from me. I don't want it to, I don't want him to be, you know, coming at the people through me or so. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I don't want to be that influence. I guess I don't know how. You know, I want him to be fed through. How God is, is leading him. That's so. good. That's good. Right. And so that's how you know they are in sync. And let me tell you something. Restoration would not be restoration would without not. this lady right here. So well, thank you. We love the pastor. But first lady saucer is the truth. And I'm telling you, the truth. Okay. I'm, you can learn how to take praise. Thank you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. with the help of God, it's only God. That's it. Take, that's it. Take credit for it. That's it. It's God. It's so God. we it's we Jesus. greatly appreciate you taking the time, absolutely. and we greatly appreciate y'all for thank hanging you. with us tonight, absolutely. chatting with us, all the comments, all the hearts, all the love, and they keep going. Yeah, keep hitting those hearts. We love, love we love it. We love it. We love it. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're gonna, Pastor, do you want to raise the offer? Because you want to do something tonight. Right. <laughs> it's the only assistant that I've seen that is so present during. A, a, I've just, I've, I've never, I've never seen this. Here he comes, y'all. Here he comes. Oh, 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 look, see, Don't look, tear up. see, hey. oh, look, look, oh. keep moving me out the frame and everything. What a music, what see? a me, uh, medium, medium thing, man. Look at that, look at that, look at y'all, Pastor. Look at y'all pass. Can you just step into the front with moving chair? Elder, you raised the offering. You, uh, you, you're, um, your will first. Will first. Oh, I thought you wanted to ask the elder is coming next. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm supposed oh. to do a session. So whenever they put up the social media post for y'all, y'all can ask me anything. <laughs> you hear me? Y'all can ask Ooh, me I'm, anything. What was this? Anything. Anything. Bring it on. I'm ready. Um, so seriously, guys, thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. Hopefully this was as much informative as it was entertaining and vice versa. So we want to make sure that we are continuously supporting our ministry financially. Um, a lot of things have stopped, but let me guarantee you, bills have not stopped. Financial obligations have not stopped. And furthermore, we have been doing some phenomenal, phenomenal renovations in the building. When you guys return to the building, you're just going to be in awe of what God is doing throughout our building. 
And um, as much as we love Lowe's, they don't love us enough to give us free wood and materials. And so there's a lot that we're trying to do and accomplish still. And uh, we are grateful for your continued support. Um, I'm glad to be a part of a ministry that understands the vision of the pastor so much to the point that we just get on board and we support financially. Um, there are multiple ways for you to support us. Um, and we want you to do so. Um, we have our text to give option. I love text to give. Let me tell you something. Text to give is it's life. Serious. It's so easy. It's so easy. You go on there, you text that phone number, and um, they're going to drop it there in the comments. Text the text to give number. If you have your tithes, if you have your offering, if you have your, um, what do we call it? Uh, debt free. Debt free. Debt free. See, I don't special, even know. I special, mean, love special love offering for first lady, um, our pastor, first family. Um, I don't even have to remember the names of them because I use text to give. Okay, right. they so, on there. Uh, they're on there. This is literally a drop down, guys. It's 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 <laughs> it's faithless. Okay, right. just go, just go do it. Okay, our text to give number is nine three seven three four three five three six six. Okay, text to give number. So make sure you give your gift tonight. Um, we want to see it. a bring all. Of what belongs what, to God. Remember what I said. I'm telling you. To the storehouse. Put it the top. Take it off immediately. And give take it, it off you. immediately and give. I'm telling you, you cannot beat God given. No matter how I, he that. had. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Put. He said, put me to the test. The Lord said, double dog dare me. Prove double, me now. Double dog dare there me. Was. In my words, but it's prove me now. There was this double dog dare me. So you know how we were as kids. Like, okay, okay, okay. So I'm telling you now, the top, take it off the top. So you don't have a off if you don't have a tie, give an offering. Absolutely. So we want you to continue to support. Uh, we want you to stay in contact with us via our outlets. Okay. We have um, text messages that are coming to you, emails, we have our church app, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have all kinds of ways for you to stay in touch with us. Stay connected to your church. Stay connected to your church. You may not come to the building, but stay connected with your church and your pastor and your ministry. Know what's going on because things are going on Absolutely. and we want you to be a part of that. And so please stay connected with us. We will be back here in worship on Sunday. Sundays have been amazing. Listen, I don't you, know if you missed the sermon. If you missed this past Sunday, go back and press play. Two of them. Go back and press play. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, after you're done, you're going to make up your mind. You'll see what I'm talking about when you go back. Listen. Go back and press play. I'm telling you. Share it with somebody. There is somebody that need to hear that. Yes. Share it. Tag them. Send it to them. Text. I don't care what you do. But listen, after that... Your mind's going to be made up. Yes. You're going to be safe, safe. Like Pastor Stops <laughs> was, was. <laughs> was, was. Was, was. <laughs> no, just kidding. I Listen, I love Pastor and Lady Saucer. Like, y'all just don't even know to the extent that I love them and I'm part of this family. I hope y'all don't take the way that we interact any other way than just that we love each other. Um, so, love so uh, we love y'all, Restoration Family. Continue to support, continue to be there for each other, lift each other up in prayer, list mm -hmm. our pastor and first lady up in prayer. They appreciate it greatly. Uh, somebody said was, was, and that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all and good night. Pastor, you have nothing to say. Tell the saints, praise the Lord. No, let me Just say speaking. praise the Lord. You don't have to come on, dog. Don't be shy now. Praise the Lord, y'all. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I so the voices that you're hearing is coming from the, uh, the illustrious Pastor Steve Saucer. Praise like the Lord, y'all. I, I am so honored to have um, Lady Saucer as our leading lady. It is amazing. Um, and I'm sure you, like myself, were benefited in some way as a result of this class tonight. Uh, and we also thank God for Elder Pharaoh being um, the hey, Oprah of you. Restoration. Thank you. And uh, holding us Oprah. down. I even got and, my Oprah uh, hair back, y'all. Listen, look forward to it. It's coming as the elder. <laughs> She's going to speak from a unique perspective that I think everybody needs to hear. And that's the perspective of servant leadership, subordinate leadership. Uh, but she has so many other layers of life that she can speak to. I think it's going to be uh, lit, lit. Lit, lit. Jump Somebody jump. say.
say Lynn Lynn in the comments? Jumping, jumping. They still say Liddy? I'm always asking this question. Oh, Liddy, Liddy. 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 Whatever you say, say it twice. I heard that's the new thing. Oh, yeah. It ain't official until you say it twice. It's going to be right, right. <laughs> right, right. God Good bless y'all, and I love y'all. Good night, restoration. Good night, restoration, and all of our cyber friends and family. We love you to life, and you can't do nothing about it. Yes. I done got in the stream. Be in the stream. <laughs>